Well, President Obama begins a tour promoting his proposal to cut long-term budget deficits with a new urgency after Standard & Poor's warned that the nation's AAA credit rating was in trouble. For more, let's bring in Stu Eisenstadt, former Deputy U.S. Treasury Secretary under President Clinton. Stu is a former ambassador to the European Union and is now a partner at the law firm Covington & Burling. Uh, Stuart, good to have you here with us. First of all, Thank you. do you agree that there's a new urgency to cut the long-term budget deficit as a result of the move yesterday by Standard & Poor's? Yes. I mean, let's remember that this is like an international report card, our AAA rating. There are only about a dozen countries in the world that have it. And for us, it's particularly important because it allows us to borrow at very low rates. It allows the Federal Reserve to buy bonds and keep interest rates low. And it really bolsters the international status of the dollar as a reserve currency. So this is a shot across the bow. It's not an actual downgrade, but it mm. is a political warning that the parties need to get together, raise the debt limit in May or June, and deal with the fiscal 12 budget in a comprehensive way so that we have a long-term deficit reduction plan in place. That's basically what Standard & Poor's was saying, and they, they, they're they saying that they doubt there's a political will to come together mm. to do that. Stu, it's interesting. You just said political warning. Uh, Austin Goolsby, President Obama's uh, chief economic advisor, he um, said what happened by the S&P. He said it's a, it, he, he called it a political judgment by S&P, and he, and he didn't it was something that he said didn't deserve much weight. I mean, is Goolsby right then? I mean, he kind of shrugged it aside. You say, sound like it's a little bit more important, but what really changed? Well, it is a political judgment. It's a sort of odd statement to say that we don't trust the American political system to come together. If you actually look at the two budget plans that are out there, President Obama's to cut the deficit by $4 trillion over 12 years, the House Republicans to do it over 10 years, a roughly mm -hmm. comparable amount. The amounts are the same, Carol, but the problem is the method by which they do it is so dramatically different. Right. The Republicans don't want to raise any taxes. The uh, Democratic plan is to raise taxes and cut defense spending. And S&P is basically making a, a sort of strange political judgment that they don't think there's room in the middle for a compromise. Well, you know, that's... I believe there is. You, you believe there is. Let me throw some numbers at you because I find these staggering. You know, what the White House is proposing uh, for their fiscal 2012 budget, they say total debt would be $20.8 trillion by 2016. The Republican side, if you look at uh, Congressman Ryan's plan, uh, we would need a debt ceiling of at least $19.5 trillion. This is according to, uh, to Bloomberg government data. That is still a lot of debt. I mean, can we manage those levels? You know, Carol, in the last three years of the Clinton administration, we handed the Bush uh, administration three straight budget surpluses. Mm -hmm. We were worried about how to keep the value of the bonds when we weren't selling any. Uh, it is a staggering amount, and it indicates what a deep hole we've dug for ourselves by financing two wars, a big Medicare drug benefit, now Libya, uh, and a stimulus plan essentially without raising taxes or cutting spending, but rather, in effect, by borrowing. I still go to, with the adage of Winston Churchill, who said many decades ago, Americans always do the right thing after they've exhausted every other alternative. <laughs> I hope we don't have to do that because it will send very negative marks mm. to the financial markets if we dither and play political chicken with the debt limit and right. with the fiscal 12 budget. Mm, not sure we can afford to do that. Stu, I've got about 30 seconds left for you. Uh, bottom line, in terms of what needs to be done, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, do we, no doubt about it, need to raise taxes to help solve this problem? We need to cut spending, defense and domestic, and we need to have an increase in taxes. But this can be done as the Deficit Reduction Commission indicated, and that is by lowering tax rates, closing tax loopholes, and mm -hmm. that actually on a net basis will raise taxes without, or raise revenues without actually well, hurting the American economy. And that was certainly proposed by the Simpson-Bowles Commission. That was the president's own commission. Are you shocked that he hasn't kind of fully embraced that? I think it was a mistake for the president not to have embraced it in his January budget. I think if that had occurred, we would be on a better 
uh, path now, but he now in effect has done so by his new proposal. And I think that what the gang of six, as they're called in the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, led by Senator Chambliss and Senator Dorgan, a bipartisan group, okay. is trying in effect to go back to that deficit reduction plan. That is the best blueprint we have. And I think, again, as Winston Churchill said in the end, after exhausting all alternatives, that's the one that we will uh, uh, find a consensus around. We shall see what will happen. Stu Eisenstadt, thank you so much of Covington and Burling. We appreciate your time today.